What is up guys, it is Matthew Maz Fishing and I want to say welcome back to another video. So this video has been requested a little bit by you guys. Uh, last year I got a lot of questions on how I set up my fish finder for ice fishing. So this is for my Hummingbird Helix 5. I had this set up last year, worked super well, I really liked it. Uh, I currently purchased a Helix 7 that I used on the water this year, which you'll see in all my lake trout videos. And I'm going to actually convert that over. Um, so I'm going to basically show you guys how I converted my old box. I'm going to show you guys what I did uh, and what parts you're going to need to do so. As well as I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step on how I'm going to set up my new box. Uh, my new one's going to be a little bit more complicated than my old one. This one's pretty simple. There's not too much to it, but it does the job super well. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, get right into it. So the first thing you're going to need is a impact resistant case. Now you don't need an impact resistant case. You can use like a Plano tackle box. Some people use uh, gun boxes like the ammo boxes. They all work, uh, but this is the way I like to set mine up. I think it worked super well and I was super happy with it. So this is an impact resistant case that I got from Princess Auto. I think it was about $40. I'll leave a link down below to what I believe the case was. If you go to any of their stores, you'll find them there. What's really nice is they're fully waterproof. There's actually a seal that runs all the way around, as well as in addition, it also comes with tear away padding on the inside. So you can rip away the padding and fit all of your stuff nice and snug inside the case. The second thing you're going to need is a new Hummingbird uh, gimbal mount. This is the gimbal bracket that you can buy. This one's for the Helix 5. Uh, they are particular to the units because they have different widths. I will uh, leave a link to the one for the Helix 5 down below. The third thing you guys are going to need is a power cable. This is the Hummingbird PC-11. Uh, this is the correct power cable for the Helix 5, 7s, uh, I believe the 9s in pretty much all the Helix models. Uh, again, I will leave a link down below to like an Amazon link or something like that. Uh, but you can get them wherever you can find them cheapest. So I had a lot of people ask me whether I liked having the actual mount on the outside. Um, and the reason I personally really liked it is it allowed me to hole hop very well. And in addition, it kept everything on the inside of the case nice and dry. So my battery, which is stored inside, uh, would stay nice and dry when I'm using it all day, no matter how wet outside it was. So if you were to open up my box, this is what it would look like. There's two latches right here. Pull that guy open. This is our transducer. This is the Hummingbird. I believe it's the XI 91521. Uh, it's the ice transducer for all of the Chirp Hummingbird units. This one's the uh, Chirp Helix 5 with GPS, uh, down imaging, uh, and yeah, and sonar. So then I would pull this guy out, and that's basically what the inside looks like. You can see there's the tearaway openings inside there, uh, which would allow me to store the unit. Uh, and then I also have a little tuck away in the corner, which I would usually leave the transducer when not in use. I was really happy with the way I ran this box. Uh, as you can see, that power cable I was talking about is actually routed from the outside. And then there's a hole drilled inside of the box. And then I ran it to the inside there. So then basically to set up my unit, all I would do, close that guy up, grab your unit, plug in your power cable, Slide that guy in, screw down your knobs, and there you are. You're basically good to go. You uh, plug in your transducer on the back, wrap the cable around it, and you are all set. Pretty basic setup, guys, but it worked super well, uh, and that's what I like to use. All right, guys, so now you've seen how I ran my Helix 5 last year. Uh, it's a pretty simple setup. It worked really well. Uh, I really liked it. If you guys do have any questions on that, make sure you leave a comment down below. I will happily answer to the best of my ability. Uh, and now I'm gonna take you guys through and actually show you step-by-step step how I'm going to set up my new unit for this year. So as you guys would have probably seen uh, in my Laker videos, I was using a Helix 7. Uh, so I picked this guy up for my boat. It's the Helix 7. It's the new G3N unit. It's got the Mega DI, Mega SI GPS fully loaded, everything on it. Uh, super stoked with this unit. It worked really well. Uh, and this is how I'm going to run it. So I was thinking about buying an additional gimbal mount like I bought for my other unit, this guy on the back here. Uh, but then I figured I already have the gimbal mounted on a ram plate. So if I already have that on a ram plate, I might as well mount the ram plate onto my box. So instead of buying a new gimbal mount, all I had to buy was a additional RAM ball mount. So I'm basically gonna mount one of these guys onto my new box. Uh, it's gonna make it so that I can actually boost the unit up a little bit higher, cause now it'll be sitting like that. 
uh, which will be pretty sweet. And I got the full use of the ram mount, so I can actually angle it and twist it and uh, really use the unit the way I want. So the next thing that we're gonna need, which is arguably the most important thing in all of this, is a box. So at Canadian Tire, I found this guy. It was on sale for $50. It was regularly 150 bucks. It's a Maxim. Again, it's one of those like heavy duty style, uh, impact, water resistant, waterproof style boxes. So it's got a couple of latches on the front here. Oh, haven't used it too much. Open it up. And it's already fully padded, which is awesome. It's still got a couple layers of padding. There's that guy. Then underneath there's still more tear away padding. And then there's still an additional layer of padding on the bottom. So it's gonna keep all your gear nice and secure. Keep it all nice and safe. You don't have to worry about breaking anything, which is why I really like these styles of boxes. And on the top, we also have our padding too. So this was a pretty sweet deal. Uh, regularly, again, I think it was $150 on sale for 50. Uh, so really good buy, super stoked with this. So basically what we're gonna do, mount that guy on there and mount our unit on top. So it'll be something like that. And in addition, I do recognize that now since I'm using a Helix 7, I'm going to be drawing a lot more power. Uh, so since I'm going to, uh, someone actually gave me a free battery. So I figure in addition to the Vexilar battery that I had in my unit last year, I'm gonna run two batteries. I'm gonna run these in parallel. Uh, so in order to do that, here's a couple more things you guys are gonna need. Uh, it doesn't, particularly matter what gauge. I bought 14 gauge, 25 feet of wire. You definitely don't need 25 feet. You're probably only gonna need like four or five, but this was all on sale at Princess Auto for like five bucks. Uh, so pretty good steal on that. I got some red. And then we also have some black, so I can make my positive negative, make it easy to distinguish. Uh, and in addition to these guys, we are also going to need spade lugs. You can find spade lugs at most hardware stores. Uh, those are basically the pieces that connect onto the battery terminals. I'm gonna need four of those since now I have four terminals. In addition, in order to run the battery in parallel, uh, I'm also going to need some butt connectors. So butt connectors are basically going to allow me to splice the wires together to run these guys in parallel. And so one last thing that I decided to do, this is a little bit of uh, a little bit of overkill, but since you guys know and you're watching this right now, you can tell that I film fishing videos. Um, so filming fishing videos, I usually use GoPros and what I'm gonna end up doing is actually mounting a GoPro as well on a RAM mount on top of this box. So what I decided to pick up, I got off Amazon, I think it was like 20 bucks. It's not that expensive at all. It's actually a little portable power outlet. So I can actually plug in Definitely can't see it, but I can actually plug in two USB cables. So when I'm running my GoPros, rather than running them to an external battery, I'll have the one that's mounted on here, simply plug it in and power it off of these two guys. So that's gonna make filming for me a lot more convenient, a lot easier, which means more content for you guys. So one of the last and final things we're gonna need, which I'm just taking from my old unit, is our transducer. Uh, again, I think this is the XI9 1521. I think it actually says on here. It doesn't, it just says XDR Chirp Ice Deucer. Um, but I'll leave a link down below. Please note there are two different transducers if you do not have a Chirp unit. Uh, I'll leave a link and I'll make sure to distinguish between the two for you guys so you pick out the right one. But I'm just using my old transducer. No point in buying a new one because I'm not gonna be using two at the same time. Uh, and then the very last thing that we went out and bought, which I didn't necessarily need to buy, I could have probably reused my old one, uh, but I got a new Hummingbird power cable. Again, this is the PC-21. The, again, this is the PC-11. Okay guys, so before I go in and actually cut and drill anything, uh, I've kind of done like a rough layout of what I think my box is gonna look like. So on the inside, when you pull it open, we're gonna have our two batteries tucked away in this bottom corner here. Um, so then what I had to figure out is where I want to mount my unit with the RAM mount, where I want to mount uh, this guy, the little USB port. Uh, and then the last thing that I had to figure out is where I want to mount. I'm going to put a GoPro on here as well with a RAM mount. So I had to make sure I leave some space for that. So what I figure the best way to do this is have the unit over on this side because it will actually counteract the weight of the batteries to help balance everything out. Uh, and then in the top corner here, I'm gonna have my voltmeter and then my GoPro, I'm gonna mount probably somewhere around here. 
And I think that's the best way to do this. Uh, it's gonna balance all the weight the best, uh, as well as it's not gonna have anything that will potentially protrude into the batteries. So remember, when you're doing stuff like this, always think about it before you cut it, because you only get one shot at it. So now we're going to first install the USB port, uh, and then we're gonna screw in the uh, RAM mount ball. Okay guys, so now that we have our hole, we can take our USB port, slip it in there, fits perfect, and there's a little lock ring that uh, goes on the inside. So now, let's see if I can get that in frame, open the box up. And as simple as that guys, now we have that guy installed. Okay, next step, we are going to install the RAM mount ball. Okay guys, so now since we have the outlet installed right here, uh, it's not wired or hooked up or anything yet, but it is installed on the box. Uh, it is now time to install our little RAM mount here. So I think I'm gonna put it roughly around here on the other side of the box, center out that logo, and I'm uh, basically just gonna drill holes, bolt that down, and uh, then we'll be on to the actual electronic rigging. So guys, there we have it. We now have our ball mounted on top. We have our uh, USB outlets on the side here. So from here, you could literally go and bolt your unit on. Well, not even bolt. Put on the RAM mount, snug it up. And there we go. Now you can see you got your Helix installed on your actual box. It's nice and sturdy. It's not going anywhere. There's nothing in the box right now, so it's a little bit light, but that's basically what your setup is going to look like. Uh, like I said, I think I'm gonna plop a GoPro or something right here so I can actually film myself. Uh, and yeah, it'll be a pretty sick setup, guys. We're gonna uh, keep going and start doing some wiring. So one more thing that I'm going to do, um, on my old unit, I had that uh, bracket, that gimbal mount that you saw that the hummingbirds uh, come with. Uh, and that was basically how I snuck my wire in there. So the wire on those guys actually have like a little groove in the back of them so you can kind of hide the hole. What I'm gonna do on this guy is I think I'm actually gonna put it right through the ram mount. There's one hole on the back corner. Uh, so I'm gonna drill that guy out and that's how I'm gonna actually stick my wire and feed it through the top. Okay guys, so it's been a little while since I checked in, but I've finally done it. So we got these two batteries now running in parallel. We got a red going here. Uh, we got two red wires going to a little spade lug that connects to that battery. Uh, and then we got our single black uh, to another spade lug that's got two black wires running from that guy. Uh, so we got both those now running in parallel, which is awesome. That should give me enough power all day to power both my fish finder and my GoPro uh, without any problems. And what's pretty cool too is uh, on the box here, I don't know if you can see that very well, but uh, the little USB port that I bought has like a little voltmeter on it, uh, which really will only tell me if the batteries are dead or not. <laughs> but a uh, pretty cool little feature that it has on there. It's still cool to have that regardless. Uh, so yeah, now basically we are going to move on and get the actual batteries situated into the box. Uh, I'm gonna tear away some of that tear away foam and hopefully get it looking nice and clean. So now guys, we are going to basically fit the batteries to the uh, tear away foam. I'm gonna just place it in here, make sure it's nice and flush. And uh, we're gonna just take a little bit of white out and basically just mark the squares uh, so that we know where we need to take it out. So now you can see, I just marked with white out there uh, that basically draws out our square to show me which foam I need to rip away. So now we're gonna do that. So there is our first block of foam 
This one's stacked double high, so we're gonna have to tear away one more layer. But just to give it a quick check, battery sits in nice and neat. We got a little space on this side, which is no big deal, because we still have to tear away at this guy. So now we're gonna place the second battery, figure out how far we need to tear for that guy. It's gonna be the same length, so I'm really just looking for the width. Again, gonna just take this guy and just mark it a little bit, just so I know what foam I need to rip away. And there we have it, there is our battery holes. So one and two. Those fit in there nice and snug. Uh, I do have to rip away one more layer of foam since this is like a double tall box. So I'm gonna just go and uh, do that right now. And there we have it. There is our two rip away pieces. Tuck that in, tuck that in, and drop in your batteries. Just like that guys, nice and flush. Looks super clean, super happy with that. So now one of the last things I have to decide is how I'm gonna actually get the wires through this top layer of padding. So I think what I'm gonna do, um, since I already have wires protruding from here and it kind of sticks out, I'm gonna actually cut a hole in the foam uh, where this guy sits. So what I'm gonna do to make this easier is actually remove it and take it right out. And I'm gonna go in with the drill and uh, make myself a little pre-cut hole and then I'm gonna go in and cut it with the blade. Okay guys, after ripping away foam for probably the past 25 minutes, I think I've finally done it. So this is what the box looks like from the outside. As you can see, super clean. All we have is the little ball on top. We got our power cable and we have our USB. So then when you go to the front, crack her open. It's nice and snug. You can see it's literally compressed to fit due to the foam. Uh, so you pull that guy open and there is where the magic happens. So we have our unit just tucked in there super nicely by that foam. Once it wears in a little bit, it'll come out a little bit easier. But yeah, so there's our unit packed in there. It's already ready to go on a ram mount. All good and set, ready to rock. We have our two batteries tucked in there nice and neatly. We got our wiring, not the cleanest in the world, but it'll work. It works for me, I'm pretty happy with it. And uh, then we have our transducer, which is tucked in the back here. So pull that guy out, unravel your cable, and then basically from there, you will uh, close the box up, do up your latches. This guy pops on nice and quick because we already have that on our ram mount. Turn of a dial. That's all set. And then all you gotta do, transducer cable goes in, power cable goes in, and then boom, there is our unit. Press the power button, show you guys it all works. Power's on, uh, we got our voltmeter going, so now I can plug in two USBs, so even if I wanna charge my phone or charge some batteries uh, while I'm out and going, I can do that, which is super sick. And yeah, so transducer's going, wrap that cable around the RAM mount if you want, clean it up a little bit. But uh, other than that, that is pretty much it, guys. That is how I'm gonna have my box uh, set up for this season. Pretty stoked, it's still nice and compact, which is awesome. Uh, but I'm able to fit a little bit more gear in it. Got the seven this year instead of the five, so a little bit more screen, have a little bit more fun with the fish. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys.
watched it guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions, please, please, please leave a comment down below. Um, and I'm gonna be sure to try to link everything that I use to make both of these boxes. Uh, so if you guys want, you can go ahead and do it yourself. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day and peace.